Welcome back. I'd like to introduce my first guest of the programme today, and it's a lady called Callie Geddy from Dental Mavericks. Good afternoon, Callie. Oh, hi, Peter. Thank you very much for joining me today. Please do tell our listeners what Dental Mavericks is, this wonderful organisation that you work with. Um, Dental Mavericks is a unique organisation. Um, um, we bring over private dentists from the UK um, and they um, come over to Morocco and they treat children who don't have access to dentists to take them out of dental pain. And what and just how limited is access to dentists in Morocco for perhaps a large percentage of the children, child population? Um, it's very limited. Um, I'd say potentially um, the area that we go into is a place called El Jabar, and um, there's potentially probably one dentist in 150,000. But the challenge is that um, there's no access to dan dental care. So. Um, even though there is a dentist there, there's no access to it. You mean geographically there's no access? Yeah. It's too far. Okay, but I mean, even if there was one dentist to 150,000, I mean, that's some dentist. You've, you've got to have a bit of a super amount of a dentist to deal with that. Yeah, and I think the challenge is as well is that they use dentistry in other forms, um, uh, similar, you know, to in markets and things like that. So it's not, it's not dentistry as we know it. Oh, you mean perhaps in the, the back of a shop somewhere? Yeah, or, or on, on, on markets, or you can purchase teeth and that type of thing. So it's a completely different concept to how we know dentistry. Actually, it's funny you say that. I saw something yesterday. I didn't watch it for long, but I did see something yesterday. I think it was on Al Jazeera, which was um, mm. footage about a dentist in India. Uh, and literally yeah. it was somebody whose cousin, sec cousin, second cousin, third removed, was a dentist, and he decided to try his hand at it. Yes. Yeah. But of course, um, the, other, the other challenge is, is that it's, it's quite um, a sweet diet. So um, one of the other things that we go in to do is, is basically to take the child out of, you know, with toothache or if you've got a long tooth, if anyone's got a lot of most people have experienced toothache. Um, our our um, uh, sort of end, end result is to take the child out, out, out of dental pain. And how do you access these children? I mean, when, how, how do you focus on which children? How do you get your help to them? Um, basically, um, the back story is that we, um, a friend of ours, a mutual friend of ours, went uh, spent quite a lot of time in, in Morocco, and he introduced us to the school in Al Jabal, which has 600 children. Um, so, um, long term, we want to have a sustainable oral health program in place, whereby um, we provide toothbrushes, uh, toothpaste, toothbrushes, fluoride, um, and that's, that's happening now. But um, the access is given through um, through the government. Um, we work with the government over quite a long period of time to um, get the access there. But then when we arrive there, or just before, um, we always speak, the headmaster there is a great guy, and we always um, ask him for to speak to the children and find out who, who's got toothache, basically. And previous to, to you going in there, I mean, what, how much emphasis has there been on dental care? By the sounds of it, not very much. Yeah, it, it, um, I think probably when we went um, in terms of brushing teeth, there's not a lot, lot of brushing, brushing of teeth. So that's, that's obviously um, helping them um, to, we, we're going to set up a toothbrushing club this year. Um, but basically just really to maintain oral hygiene, it's just, you know, going in and, and um, showing an easier way than, than not doing anything at all. But why would it be that historically they, you know, the, the kids have not been encouraged to brush their teeth? I mean, assumedly, uh, traditionally the diet would have been a lot healthier and a lot cleaner for the teeth, less sugars and so on. Um, and nowadays, I suppose, kids are sort of eating more sweets and so on, so they, that has to be taken into consideration? Yeah, and also the uh, mint tea, the, the mint tea is quite sweet as well, that, 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 um, uh -huh. that's quite um, abundant, but... Um, I think it's just, you know, it's just a, 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 a difference in, in access to, to um, you know, toothbrushes, toothpaste, things like that. It's very remote where we are. Um, there's not a lot of uh, things for sale in shops and, that, you know, things that we get used to being able to purchase easily is just not readily available. So it's just really an educational and access um you know, uh, challenge really. So, I mean, you, you use the word challenge. Your focus is obviously helping kids with their dental care now. But to do that, you've had to go first of all through the government. You've then, um, after going through the government, you've had to go through the the education system or their parents. So, how much resistance yeah. have you encountered in doing this? To, no, you know, no, it's, um, it's uh, we've had a, a, a great experience. Um, it's just really learning how 
um, the, the uh, Moroccan government are, are really, um, really helpful, and um, you know they're, they're working with us. We've got a great lady who's based in uh, in Marbella called Maurice, who's been who speaks Arabic, and she rings the um, government on a daily basis. Um, it's just really there's been a government change in Morocco, so this year has been slightly different, but it's just really you know working with them with their system um, and getting authority for us to be able to go in and do what we want to do. And how are you providing the care then? We provide the care by um, we each dentist that uh, is involved in dental mavericks, and some of them are coming back for a third year. And um, they all raise um, uh, they said from their own trip that they all raise around a thousand pounds each, and that enables us to buy equipment. Um, so basically, when we turn up there, we're like a mobile clinic, um, and. To, to achieve what we want to do in terms of restoring and, and extracting teeth, um, we're now um, being able to um, provide chairs that have solar-powered drills and suction and um, you know all, all the stuff that we need. But it's all it's all raised through the dentists as well. It's it's um, it's quite an amazing project. Mm. And how many dentists have you got working with you? Uh, we've got eight dentists coming with us this year. Um, Are they all from the UK? all from the UK and then some of them bring with them their own dental nurses as well um, but we also do something quite unique where we set up a, a pain free area before the children go through because the other interesting fact is that they've never seen a dentist before or ever sat in a dental chair so it's quite a unique experience and as, as we all know it can be quite scary going to be Yeah, those of us who've had it all of our lives, even though we're still scared of <laughs> Exactly. Um, so what we do is we set up a really fun area, we take big giant sort of rabbits with us and, and, and stuff and, and toys and, and things that we can give to the kids so that they, they want to, mm. um, you know, come, come and see us. And uh, a funny story, last year we had one child who actually asked us if we'd take another tooth out so that um, he could come through the process again. So we are making as fun as we can. What, what does it mean to these kids? I mean, obviously, tooth pain, pain toothache is horrendous. We all know that. Um, yeah. But if we can not think about toothache, the importance of healthy teeth. Um, I've been led to believe that um, badly kept teeth and gums can be indicative of other diseases later in life. Yes, heart disease and, and that type mm. of thing, yeah. Um, for, the, for the child, um, we're, um, the children's age that we're dealing with is usually between seven and nine. Some of the children, unfortunately, we've had to take their second teeth out. But again, working with them on a third year, our aim now is to save the teeth, to restore the teeth that they've got and not to just have to extract them. So um, for the kids with the, with the milk teeth, obviously losing them is not too much of a big deal in terms that they'll, they'll, you know, they'll grow. But our, um, our long-term aim, of course, is to keep and restore the teeth that, that they've got so that um, they don't lose them, basically, so they're not left with, without any teeth. And so it's, it's a matter of, I mean, it's, you know, um, to actually put... Uh, replace teeth would be far too costly and um, far reaching but just to maintain at least the teeth that they've got is what's important that's it yeah and, and of course to take them out of pain but, but this, as I said this is our third year so this time we're, we're now starting to restore and as you mentioned earlier to um, work with the parents as well because of course we can set the toothbrushing clubs up in school but just to give an example if they're, if they're shut for summer then you know it's got to be a, at least a, a once a day um, you know uh, uh, task that they need to brush their teeth and it's a, just a sort of ongoing educational program really isn't it you know with yeah and um, great, great help from another charity called Dentaid in the UK um, they've been helping us with, to supply the right equipment and educational products um, and really to um, sort of guide us because we only got registered as a charity this year and um, to guide us to, to be able to deliver the right type of um, education and the right type of treatment as well. So give us an idea of where people can um, find you and how they can help. Yeah, we're on Facebook under Dental Mavericks and also we have a website which is www.dentalmavericks.org um, you'll see on there that we're actually raising funds at the moment to to, to purchase or, or to fit out a, a dental ambulance mm. um, just really to be able to make the, the journey and the trip easier and be more, be more self-contained. 
And um, what we're doing with that dental ambulance is we'll also, when it's not in use in, in, in Africa, um, we'll be taking that over to the UK and each maverick that's involved with us will be able to use within his or her local area um, and we want to start um, doing delivering dentistry to homeless as well in the UK. Oh, that's a wonderful idea. Gosh. Mm. Gosh. So actually to, to be taking people from the streets and helping them with their dental care. Yes. Yes. So that, that's a project for the future. But we, we just thought that if we're going over to Morocco or, or Africa, um, you know, two or three times a year, you know, we don't want to be raising money for a vehicle that's going to be static. So we thought that would be a great idea to take it over and let the practices use it who are involved with our organisation. Oh, that's wonderful. And I mean, certainly when I think back, you know, I've Spain maybe sort of 30, 40 years ago, and I've been coming here for a long, long time, um, emphasis on dental care here wasn't particularly emphasised. Sized. However, now the Spanish are much more aware of, of dental hygiene. Yes. So, I mean, yes, I, I think big change, big change. it's just a matter of education, isn't it? And, uh, and, yeah, and information. And providing, you know, like education, get, getting uh, the same with, with educating children under normal circumstances, getting the school, the parent, and the child, you know, that three three party involvement. That's it. And listen, Kelly Geddy, I hope we can speak again and keep a focus on this. But Kelly, yes. Kelly is from dentalmavericks.org, so you can certainly look at the website there and the Facebook page as well. Yes. Lovely. Kelly, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, thanks for inviting me, Peter. Pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.